Welcome to Field to Feast, where we profile Louisiana's local ingredients. This morning, we're at local cooling farms in Bogalusa, Louisiana, with Kate and Grant Estrad. They have eggs, goats, pork, and beef. Tori and I are gonna take the tour and then enjoy some of the local fare. Field to Feast with Jennifer Finley is brought to you by the Louisiana Crawfish Promotion and Research Board. Louisiana Crawfish, ask before you eat. By the Louisiana Beef Industry Council, beef, it's what's for dinner. And by the Louisiana Rice Promotion Board, think rice. So we're at local cooling farms and Grant is going to talk to us about what they have going on with their beef. So what are we going to do today? Well, we've got uh, we've got a summer seed mix that we're putting out today. We've got sunflower, clay peas, sorghum, Sudan grass, and uh, grain sorghum. We're actually going to go spread the seed, and then you're going to use the cattle to take right. it down. Yep, yep. So we're gonna. So I guess technically you'd call this uh, uh, cover crop pasture overseeding, where we have thrown it out. Um, and then, you know, using the cattle is just a fun way to do it. Um, and then it's uh, very labor free for us. The animals do all the work. What, what does that do for the topsoil versus like getting in there and then tilling the whole thing up? And right. Kind of go so, so their hoof action is going to cause mild disturbance. Mm -hmm. It's not going to cause like over disturbance. So we're not going to get in there and like till it. Because yeah. if we do that, we're going to mess up all the, the earthworms and a lot mm -hmm. of the biology okay. in there. And then also the root systems of the existing plants we don't want to mess with them. We want them to kind of stay because all this stuff is going to grow amongst all yeah. the other stuff. Mm -hmm. So we want to do real mild disturbance and that hoof action is like perfect for yeah. this. Yeah, and, and, and how long does it typically take? Well, we're going to, so we're only going to have the cattle in this area for one day. Okay. So it's going to be a one day deal. We're going to pull them out. This stuff is going to start germinating, especially with all this rain that we're having, like in a couple of days. And then we're going to see real growth in here in about 10 days. Awesome. Trying to feed the soil, trying to feed the animals in one shot. Broad overview, what does local cooling farm do? Well, we're, uh, we're livestock uh, specific farm. We're not doing produce or anything. So our specialty is going to be uh, it's going to be some beef cattle. And then when I say beef cattle, we're, we're focusing on uh, heritage piney woods cattle that are really good for the Gulf Coast area. Um, eggs, pork, goat meat. Did I miss anything? Mm -hmm. Yep, so that's it. Yep. Sounds so delicious. Yeah, sounds yeah, like yeah, enough sounds to live fantastic. on. Sounds fantastic, that's right. And not just raising it for meat, but um, but restoring the ecosystem, building the yeah. soil. Like yeah, so we're using the latest and greatest rotational, you know, grazing methodologies. So we're, um, you know, our bottom line is to make money like any other business, but we've got other multiple bottom lines. And one is increasing biodiversity and increasing soil health in our area. And local cooling farms, local cooling is a play on global warming. It's the opposite of global warming, because when you do this type of agriculture, you actually sequester carbon into the soil out of the atmosphere so it is a, a carbon absorbing effect that happens naturally and you get to play with baby goats yeah and baby pigs <laughs> which yeah. is very fun <laughs> when we can we um try to have them follow uh the goats or the cattle now the coops will move close this off and we'll set up a new spot so it's just kind of leapfrogging each time so there's a bunch of different color chickens here like how many yeah. how many different species do you have so the white with the black is Delawares, the tan are Novagens, they're um, a French developed pasture breed, dark red are Rhode Island Reds, the like black and orange, like those are um, Easter Eggers, they lay those blue eggs, and then the striped are Dominiques, got some Brahmas, the black ones are Minorcas, like a Spanish breed, so yeah, so probably if I were to count like 9 or 10. Um, most important question, like which which ones taste the best? <laughs> the, I think they taste like I think diet trumps breed on anything. Um, you know, so you'll have like sometimes I'll crack an egg, and it's like maybe not as deep orange as we like to see. And I'm like, who is that bird? Who is slacking? Yeah. Who's sitting Come around? On, people. Like y'all are like sitting around the feeder and not eating as much grass. Like you, you know, no. So it's diet. <laughs> it's um. They are people. Is what you're looking for? The bright orange? dark orange. Like that's beta carotene and vitamin A essentially. And, um, and who's buying all the eggs? 
So we um, we do sell to a few restaurants now. Um, like, 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 like I, yeah, we need to work on that. Um, but mostly retail. We have we sell our eggs um, at our shop and then through our delivery hubs. Yeah. So you know sometimes like forty dozen a day to forty dozen a day to like individual. I mean they're laying probably right now they're probably laying like. 40 dozen, a day. 40 dozen. So if we can keep up with the And these are all those pretty multicolor. Yeah, we'll grab some. Yeah, we'll grab Love some. Them. Yeah, so here's a few from from this morning. I'll tell you what, this is fantastic. Like literally on the farm, eggs are still warm. I can't even imagine like cracking this in the in the, in the warm bacon grease with a little bit of sea salt and pressed lemon can on top. Can you taste the difference? Absolutely. So this is like that. straight out of the chicken. <laughs> 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 oh, right? Like literally. Like, <laughs> and they're hot almost, you know? Yes. Oh yeah, my yeah, goodness. Yeah. Like straight. Because it was under right. her. Like yeah. if it had just been laid, it would have been um, like kind of a wet a little bit. When they're clean like this, you don't really need to wash them because the 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 chicken lays this microbial layer to uh -huh. keep it's like a protective shell mm -hmm. so as soon as you wipe that off with water then bacteria can permeate right. easier yeah. so that's why like in Europe and Asia they don't refrigerate their eggs because they don't wash them this is so. beautiful this is so cool yeah, I'm telling you what right literally right from the farm and very soon will be to the table Farm to table fresh local Louisiana eggs oh yeah actually um we're gonna have tacos for lunch, and I was thinking of just doing a little aioli with the immersion blender quick, because yeah. like the beef it. needs, it was like a round roast, and it's like it's not quite fatty enough, I feel yeah. like. Yeah. I'm like, so what like fatty unctuousness do we have? I'm like, uh, you're gonna do that at the restaurant, aren't you? <laughs> totally, totally ripping that off. Man. Yellow cool. mayo. You heard, you heard it here first. <laughs> today we're gonna watch them cook. They're gonna cook for us today. That's a nice That's twist. It. It's a good thing I brought the wine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's head in and get some food. Today we're reversing the roles and Kate and Grant are actually going to cook for Chef Tori. What's your favorite thing that you found out today or learned about today or there are just so many? I just think this whole thing is absolutely fascinating, right? To get to run around with the ducks and the chicken and see the cows and then there's, you know, herdy goats over here, fresh pigs and have this. Um, amazing opportunity to visit the farm and see like the differences between an amazing like organic fresh egg like a hen's egg versus a duck egg side by side it's like that we need that for our food to make our great louisiana food just taste that much better so amazing does it make a difference oh when gosh. you use these fresh local louisiana ingredients absolutely the, the flavor is better um it's an amazing story Right, but right, and, and the, all the guests that jump in in the dining room, they're like, "Man, tell me about this dish. It is so unusual." And I haven't seen something like this since my grandma's, you know, breakfast table, right, with a crack and fresh eggs into it. And it's just the whole thing kind of comes right back around. And and to teach a kid from the neighborhood, look, here's the difference. Here's like something you get from a commercial producer, but this comes right off of the, the cooling farm. I mean, you see like. Their, their brain starts to explode. And for me, that's that's better than paycheck. For you regularly eat? Absolutely. These guys have roasted a hog and they braised a bunch of beef and it sounds like, uh, smells like we're about to have tacos. I'm hungry. Well, this looks so. delicious. Yay. I want to thank y'all so much for having us today. I mean, this has been quite a treat for me, quite a treat for Tori. Yeah, yeah. absolutely right. Yeah, your hospitality is just amazing. Thank you so much for inviting us out to the farm. I've had a wonderful time. Yeah, thanks for coming. Yeah. I wish everybody could be here to enjoy this with us, but we will see you next time on Field to Feast. Awesome, let's Yay. take it. Let's eat before we get rained on. <laughs> uh, um, unbelievable. <laughs> Field to Feast with Jennifer Finley was brought to you by the Louisiana Crawfish Promotion and Research Board. Louisiana Crawfish, ask before you eat. By the Louisiana Beef Industry Council, beef, it's what's for dinner. And by the Louisiana Rice Promotion Board, think rice.